Hi, I'm Ben Graham, and this is The Global Economy. Uh, today, we are starting with a lecture on supply and demand. And we're starting with supply and demand because this is sort of the core fundamental of a course on the global economy, right? Um, we're gonna talk about supply and demand for goods, um, but we're also going to talk about supply and demand in explaining the prices of labor and the unemployment rate. We're gonna talk about supply and demand with respect to international migration. We're gonna uh, talk about supply and demand with respect to uh, international exchange rates and the value of a currency, inflation and deflation. So supply and demand are going to sit underneath everything we do uh, throughout this course. So we've got to get the fundamentals solid. Um, if you haven't already, I, I recommend after this video that you go and watch the Khan Academy videos that I've assigned uh, related to supply and demand. They do a very good job of walking through this. The goal here is to have you hear this a couple of times from me, from Khan Academy, and then come into our group sessions and really work through uh, some problems and some applications uh, together. So to start out here, we're just gonna start with how do we get to a demand curve? Why do we think about demand as, a, as being related to price, right? And, and to th the way to think about demand and, and later the way to think about supplies, demand is people's willingness to pay for something, right? And supply is your willingness to produce something. So this is sort of demand is about how many am I willing to buy at a given price? Supply is about how many am I willing to produce at a given price? So it's this individual willingness. So we see individual actions at a given price, how many does somebody buy? But we don't actually ever get to observe that whole individual demand curve that, that in some sense demand is a little bit hypothetical, right? If the price were only 50 cents, Maybe I would buy 10 ice cream cones because, oh my God, they're almost free. I just, I'm just going to keep buying them. But at a certain point, even if they're free, I'm not going to take a 13th ice cream cone because at this point, like I'm so full, I'm, I'm just going to vomit if I eat another ice cream cone. Like I value it at zero. I do not want more ice cream, right? But when it's really hot out, when I'm really hungry, and when it's that first ice cream cone, that's worth like 250 to me here in this, in this example, or even a little higher, 275 maybe for that first ice cream cone, right? Um, and so... The cheaper they are, the more I'm going to buy. And this is sort of, this is a general uh, human trait, right? That we generally, when things are less expensive, we'll consume more of them. Um, there's a few goods for which this doesn't hold. Those are called Veblen goods and they're kind of their own uh, special topic. Um, but, but by and large, demand curves slope down, right? And when we, when we talk about demand, we're often not talking just about the demand for an individual, one individual's willingness to pay. But we're talking about the demand in a market. What is the market demand for a product? And the market demand is just the sum of everybody's individual demands. So you've got some population of people uh, that constitute the market. And if you add up each of their individual demand curves, you'll get that market demand curves. So if we have Catherine's demand curve here on the left, and then we have Nicholas's demand curve here, right? So Catherine, right, her willingness to uh, consume over time, uh, to consume as, as price falls, she's, when they get really cheap, she's really willing to buy a lot. Like Catherine likes a deal, right? Nicholas kind of like tapers off pretty, uh, a little bit sharper, right? A little bit of a steeper demand curve. Like after seven, he's like, I'm out, no more, right? But if we want to understand the market demand curve, we're adding both of their demands together, right? And so it's, it's still a curve, still looks a lot like an individual demand curve, but it's just, it's the aggregate of multiple uh, individual demands. It's just an addition problem here. Okay, so this is going to get to the the key concept I want to talk about today, where where people actually think get confused most often, and this is the difference between changes in demand or movements along a demand curve. And so it's like a change in demand is a change in people's willingness to pay. Right, it's it's this change in somebody's preferences, um, and so the example given here is that a policy to discourage smoking. So think about, you know, a bunch of smoking ads, and and you watch them, and you're like, oh my goodness, I did not realize this was going to give me cancer and bad breath. Oh, maybe I don't want to have. Maybe at six bucks a pack, I won't buy two packs today. Maybe, uh, you know, I'll only buy one pack. Right, where my willingness to pay for this. Um, goes down because I've received some new information, something about my preferences has changed, right? 
So that's actually a movement in the curve. People are less willing to pay for a product because they realized it was going to kill them. Um, the other thing that we do to try to discourage smoking is we just put taxes on cigarettes, right? So we just, we change the price. Here, when you put a tax on cigarettes, you're not changing anybody's willingness to pay for cigarettes, right? People still want their cigarettes. They're still as willing to pay for them as they used to be, uh, but we've made it more expensive. And so they will buy fewer. So the demand curve is in the same place, but we've moved along. it. So in either way here, we've changed the number of, of cigarettes that people are consuming, but one is that we actually changed preferences. We actually moved the demand. And then the other, we simply changed the price and moved along the demand curve. And so we're gonna be talking about that a lot throughout the semester of interventions that actually change supply or demand or shocks to supply and demand, uh, and then just changes in prices that move us along the curve. All right, and to keep this first video short, I'm gonna stop here and we'll pick up uh, in the next video.